Here's how to find two Easter eggs in the Android operating system for your Galaxy S4. First of all, go to Settings. On this screen, the option at the top right hand corner, the other tab, press on that. Then scroll to the bottom of this list and press About Device. Now in this screen, there is a line that tells you what your Android version is. And if you just tap that about four or five times very quickly, a jelly bean will appear. That's the first Easter egg. The second Easter egg is the long press on that jelly bean and it will turn into a hundred little jelly beans which you can then fling across the screen at your heart's content. Flash is used to watch media, play games and do fancy things on websites. It's slowly being phased out and you don't need it nearly as much as you used to. But if you want to fix issues like this, where websites request Flash, here's what you need to do because the Samsung Galaxy S4 doesn't come with Flash pre-installed. First, do a Google search for archived Flash player. The first result in the list should be the Adobe website where you can download the latest official version safely. I will provide links in the description too, just in case you can't find it. On this page, scroll down to the list of files labelled Flash Player for Android 4.0. Press on the top link to download the latest version. When the download has finished, you should be able to swipe down from the top of the screen and press the downloaded file to start installing it. Now, at this point, you may encounter a warning that says you can't install applications obtained from unknown sources. That's not a problem, however, because if you press settings at this point, you'll be taken to a screen where you can turn off this block. Simply tick the Unknown Sources option and this will allow you to install applications you haven't downloaded from the Google Play Market Store. Now, if you press the back button and then go to the Downloads icon in your app drawer, you will find the Flash application. If you press on it this time, you will be allowed to install it. So that's your guide to installing Flash. But it's not quite as simple as that because if you go back to the website, it's still going to tell you that you can't load the media content because you haven't got the correct version of Flash. Well, the answer to that is that you do have the correct version of Flash, but the Chrome web browser doesn't support Flash at all. So you're going to need a new web browser. There are plenty of free web browsers that do support Flash on the Samsung Galaxy S4, but in this example, I'm going to download Boat Browser, which is available for free at the Google Play Market Store. Other browsers that support Flash currently include Firefox, Maxfon, Skyfire, and Puffin, but I will include a link to a comprehensive list in the video description. So now we have Flash and a Flash-supported browser, but as you can see, we're not quite there yet. We have one thing left to do. Obviously, this will be slightly different in different browsers, but generally what you need to do is go to the settings of a browser and then choose page settings. On this screen, there is likely to be an option called enable flash plugins. It's usually defaulted to off. So turn it on and then return to your web page. Once you've returned to your web page, refresh it and now you should notice that the flash content looks a lot more like it should do. Try using it and see what happens. I think it's a very strong traditional name. I think it's probably in recognition to the Queen's father. Yeah. Um, so I think it'll be very popular amongst the royal family. I think it's a great name. It's, it's traditional. It's in keeping with there you have it, folks. Flash is working on your Samsung Galaxy S4. Just bear in mind that it's not always going to work perfectly on your phone. That's one of the reasons why it's dying a slow death. But it's not dead just yet. I take pictures, you take pictures, everyone takes pictures. But I don't take pictures of you. That would be a bit weird. Whatever the case, the gallery of the Samsung Galaxy S4 is likely to fill it with pictures very quickly. And these pictures will be sorted into different locations depending on what they are. Pictures taken with the camera, pictures from your SD card, and pictures from social media. But then there will be this strange section of photos that make you think, what on earth are they doing here? Well, these are all pictures on the internet from Picasso albums, basically stuff on services Google provides, and the telltale sign is this little Picasso symbol next to the picture. If you want to remove these, press the menu button whilst you're in the gallery, and then select Content to Display. On the next screen, untick Content in Picasso, and when you return to the gallery, all the pictures will have magically disappeared. 
Now, this won't delete the photos. They will still be out there on the internet from whenever you put them there in the first place, but at least they're no longer clogging up your gallery. If you have been watching my Samsung Galaxy S4 basic videos from the start, you will already know that if you swipe down from the top of the screen, you can see a bar of options that give you quick access to settings. You can even scroll this bar to see more options, and you can reorder this bar if you want to put more popular settings further up the list. But if you want immediate access to all your settings, simply swipe down from the top of the screen with two fingers to bring up this screen. So, put simply, a one finger swipe down for general notifications, a two finger swipe down for complete settings. It's another one of those cheeky hidden screens that's easy to use when you know how to find it. Have you noticed that when you press the home button on the Samsung Galaxy S4, there is a slight delay before you are returned to the home screen? It's maybe about a second or so. Well, I'm sure if you hadn't noticed before, you will now I've told you. The reason there is a slight delay is because the phone is waiting a little bit to see if you press the home button again. This is because if you double tap on the home button, it launches the S Voice application. So if you would prefer to have a quicker home button response time rather than immediate S Voice access, go to the settings in S Voice and untick the open via home key option. This disables the double press function of the home button. So now, whenever you press the home button, it should respond more quickly. It's only a small performance increase, but over the course of a couple of years, just imagine how many times you are going to press that button. Let's say each press saves half a second and you press the button 5,000 times. That's two and a half thousand seconds, which equals 41 minutes. The built-in media player on a Samsung Galaxy S4 has two nice little gesture controls that you'll probably never even notice unless I show them to you, of course. Now, if you tap in the middle of the screen, you'll get the usual play, pause and skip controls. But in addition to that, the sides of the screen are gesture hotspots. What I mean by that is if you swipe up and down, you can control the screen brightness and the volume. For example, if I swipe down on the far left of the screen, I can reduce the brightness. And then swipe back up to increase the brightness. And the same principle applies for sound on the right side of the screen. Swipe up and down to control the volume. They're very simple gesture controls, but they make a world of difference. This is a short video on how to save power on your Samsung Galaxy S4 using the AVG antivirus application. By default, the trigger point for saving power is when the battery drops below 30%. At this point, a warning will appear in your notification in tray. So if you swipe down, you can see a message. The neat thing is, if you tap on this message, it will take you directly to some power saving options. The first thing you can do on this screen is set the threshold at when the phone should warn you that you are low on power. The four options being 10, 30 and 50% or completely off. You can save battery life by simply unticking any of these power draining options, such as Wi-Fi, GPS and automatic brightness. These settings will then come into effect whenever the power drops below your threshold. From this screen, you can also see an estimate of how much charge your phone has left by pressing in the top left corner of the screen and then selecting the battery consumption option. This will break down your remaining battery time in different units, such as talk time, audio playback, video playback and internet browsing. Now, for more permanent battery saving options that are always on, go to the settings icon and then choose my device. Scroll down until you see the power saving option. This is a feature that you can toggle on or off whenever you want, and it includes three features that restrict the CPU performance, lower the power level of the screen, and turn off haptic feedback, which are those small vibrations when you press the back or menu button. Of course, there are plenty of battery saving applications out there to experiment with, so if AVG doesn't take your fancy, visit the Google Play Store for alternatives. Want to check your Samsung Galaxy S4 without even touching it? Here's how. 
One of the big things about the Samsung Galaxy S4 is that it has loads of motion sensors to watch what you are doing. To view these options, go to settings, then select the My Device tab at the top of the screen, and then choose Motions and Gestures. The option we want today is Air Gesture. So, first of all, toggle the option on, and then press on the option itself to see more. The option you want here is Quick Glance, so make sure that's switched on and then lock your phone. From now on, when you wave your hand over the sensor, which is slightly to the left of the top speaker grill, this screen will display. It's important to note that while you can view the screen using this method, you can't press on the screen or unlock the phone as it automatically turns off again after a few seconds. As the option suggests, it is for a quick glance, so that you can see the time and any notifications you might have. This gesture control only really works when the phone is on a flat surface too, so just bear that in mind when you're trying to carefully set up a camera shot like this one. Perfect timing. Bored of the Samsung Galaxy S4 default lock screen message? Well, here's a guide on how to change it. To edit the message, all you need to do is display the lock screen and then press on the message itself and swipe down. You should see a border surround the message and when you let go, at the bottom portion of the screen, a pencil icon will appear on the right side of the screen. Press on it and the keyboard will pop up and you can start editing your message. As you type your message, the text will automatically resize to fit on the screen, although the upper character length is what you see now, around about 25 characters. Additional options include changing both the font colour and background, as you can see being demonstrated here. You can also change the font type and remove the date and time if you wish, using the checkboxes to the right side of the screen. Once you've completed your changes, simply press the save button in the top right hand corner of the screen and you are done. So when you next go to unlock your screen, your new message will be displayed. This is a video floating on top of a website while I browse. And this is a guide on how to do it for your Samsung Galaxy S4. The floating video feature comes with a built-in media player on the Samsung Galaxy S4, so when you play a video, make sure that you are using the video player app. When a video is playing, if you tap on the screen, you'll get the usual video player options, and it's this icon in the bottom right we're interested in. As soon as you tap that icon, the video will pop into its own floating window. The phone goes back into a normal routine so you can go to the home screen, send text messages and use applications, all while the video is happily playing to itself. If you tap on the video window, you will pause the media currently playing. Tap the window again to restart it. The video functions in an always on top mode, so if you open up a web browser, it's going to obscure content. At this point, you might want to move it around the screen, and to do this, you simply press, hold and drag. If you turn the phone to landscape, just like the application, the floating video will change orientation. And you can even resize the floating video using the standard pinch controls. And finally, if you want to make the video full screen again, simply double tap the floating window. Thanks for watching, and if you want more Samsung Galaxy S4 tips, subscribe to the VGJ Felix YouTube channel.